record. And we are recording and now let's go live to social media. Great. I believe we are going live. All right. We are live, ladies and gentlemen, live as live as can be. Well, thank you very much for, for tuning in, for those of tuning in. And I really want to thank the panel for showing up today. And remember, you can be part of the panel. Just remember, you make it happen. And so you're going to make it happen by uh, joining us uh, on the current events, our current event show. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Just remember, everything you hear today is an opinion. So, uh, you know, just do your own research. And we are going to talk about things that seem to be important to us in life. And so before we get started on what I want to say, I just want to open it up to the panel and say, hi, everybody. Is there anything that anybody wants to say before we get into the program stories that I'd like to talk about? Well, it's Australia, Australia, Australia Day today. So it's Aussie, Aussie, Aussie Day. And hopefully everyone has a good Aussie, Aussie, Aussie Day. So now, now when that when you say Aussie, Aussie, Aussie Day, is it only good for Aussies, or could the whole world enjoy it? And is it like what is it? What is why is it an Aussie, Aussie, Aussie Day? Oh, that just became a saying, but it's um, it's a celebration of um, uh, of the start of Australia. I, I believe the landing of um, Captain Cook. Uh, now, is that when they brought the first prisoners over there from England? Uh, no, I, I can't answer that, Jan. Possibly somewhere. You but can't I answer it or you won't answer it because, you know, you could take the fifth right now. Do they have the fifth there over there? You know, where you can't, you don't want to say something to incriminate yourself? No, no. I think that the first one was just an exploration. Right? So I don't think there was any, I'm pretty, like I, I would be, I wouldn't be uh, sure, but I think that the first ship didn't have any prisons on it, but it could have done. Yeah, well, there you go. So like I say, it's an opinion. Do your own research. But today, I, I don't normally do this, but we, I'm going to give you a teaser. Today, we are going to talk about aging. And Harvard University, if you saw the, the link in uh, my social media chats, you know that Harvard has come up with a cure for aging. And so stick around. We'll talk about that. But for the first thing I'd like to say is happy Lunar New Year to everyone who's Chinese. And that's billions and billions and billions of you. So um, it's the year of the rabbit. And uh, basically, it's uh, if, if uh, the whole idea is people in China now are moving everywhere around the world, it's a big time for them. And uh, here in Thailand, especially, they are starting to come in in droves. And uh, so basically, has, uh, has anybody done anything uh, special for this 15 day celebration? Good. Nobody. Uh, at least that. I can't hear anything. Hello. 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 Uh, I, I've been thing? looking for testing, testing. <laughs> uh, testing. 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 Well, anyway, I do have a rabbit on my um, phone, but I was just trying to show it, but he he couldn't see him. I don't think. I don't think he could see him. Can you see me, rabbit? You got to iris him down a little bit. So, what's that poster on the wall behind you? Oh, that's a bit of. I thought someone might mention that. He, um. That's a, uh, a little place up in Queensland that when I was on tour many, many years ago, there's a, a, a roadhouse and it's, so if you're in Mount Isa, which is like far north Queensland and it's inland, and then you drive from there to Normington, which is like at the bottom of the Gulf of Carpentaria, there's one service station and that's it. And it doubles as like, so it seems like it doubles as the nightclub, a little, uh, and you just drive up to it and it's all, well, when I went there, it's probably not now, but um, it's very remote, very remote. But uh, it was, and, and it's, um, it was, I don't know if it's still called the same thing, but it was quite famous. And because it was Australia Day, I thought I'd put the, um, a bit of uh, the flying doctors and the cows and the camels and it's all on that, um, on that pastry thing, which is actually a tea towel, really. I bought it as a souvenir, but it's a, it's, it's halfway between Mount Isa or Conclurry and Normington, which is, and it's the only survey in that distance, which is 450 kilometres, I think. Is it and out I, on a peninsula? Is that water that's around it? No, it's no water. It's, 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 um, it's almost desert, uh, but it's not desert. It's, it's, it's just like, it's just very dry and, and hot. And, um, but it's quite some, I think it's about 250 k's from the coast. So it's in the middle. It's in the middle of 400 k drive. 
It's very interesting. It's just out there. Be probably, I don't know what it'd be like in America, probably driving the other side of Vegas, I suppose, because you're on the edge of a desert. <laughs> is that right, Jan? <laughs> well, the whole area of down there, believe it or not, Los Angeles is a desert as well, so it goes all the way through. But yes, uh, and that, you know, it's amazing to me after hearing you talk about this, how many interesting facts we go through in, in, a, in a show. Unbelievable. I mean, I never even knew that Australia existed until I met you. That's about it, you know? And now I'm a, I feel like I'm an aficionado, uh, you know? Uh, hey, by the way, speaking of aficionados, anybody who's got any Apple stuff, uh, they've just updated Ventura to 13.2, uh, iOS to 16.3, and the watch 9.3, and it's pretty cool. Uh, I have to say, I've upgraded all my stuff, and it's really cool, so if you haven't done that, you should. And also, Apple has now uh, revamped their two of their two of the three of their lines where the home pod is now they're going to start going big on the home pod just an fyi um and the only reason i'm bringing this up because i own apple stock and i want to see you guys buy some more so my price goes up that's the only reason nothing to tell you about news but the and the augmented glasses are going to be coming out probably next year they're, they're pushing that back i have okay about the apple stuff i heard today i hope it's not true but I heard today that if you buy an Apple TV, if you, you're you not in the Apple ecosystem, if you buy an Apple TV, you cannot register it. You no, I find that to be, I find that to be hard to believe. You have to because register it on another Apple device. I find that very hard to believe because they're, they're going standalone because they're going after all of the other devices. So I find that that would be something that would be that would be a hard, a hard priced thing to go to because then it would become like a monopoly uh, if they could do that. Then they would be controlling. They're already being sued for so many reasons regarding uh, their, their monopolistic tendencies with the App Store if, in Europe. So I doubt well, you never know. Where, where did you read that? The Onion? I just, I just heard it on the way home today, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up tonight. But if that is indeed true, that's just another strike against Apple. It's, it's like, you know, if, what, if, what if you got it as a gift? You know, you don't, you're a Windows guy, you're an Android user, you don't have any other Apple, iDevices, whatever. You got it as a gift. You can't use the thing? Really? Come on. That would be horrible. You know, I, 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 when I was originally going to buy Bo a Apple Watch, she didn't have an Apple phone, and the the all you could still use the Apple Watch without an iPhone, but it's so limited it's on really what you can do with it. Yeah, yeah, it's an extension. Buy a, you anyway. buy a watch, but you can't do anything with it because you have to have some other i device to be able to talk to it. So That's it's right. Probably, probably a true story. I, like I said, I just heard it today. Well, we'll find out. We will find out. You can report back on it next week. I'll Somebody tell you that. Somebody just dropped it. it in the chat. Let me look it up. So I, I want to say, you know, the thing is, is this is it, and it's an interesting thing. I wasn't planning on talking this about Apple, but Google's in the news right now, too, because they're being sued as 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 being basically a monopoly in the advertising space on the Internet. And it's kind of interesting because before Google, there wasn't anything like Google. Before there was Apple, there wasn't anything like Apple. And now here these guys have created something. And now people are saying, wow, you've created something really good. And now I'm going to take it away from you. And I kind of I feel I have mixed emotions about that. You know, it's like, OK, let's talk about like an offshoot of that would be the telephone service in our neighborhood. Like, for example, in Las Vegas, the main provider is Cox. If I don't like Cox, I'm really shit out of luck because I have to use Cox. And and in the old days, of course, AT&T was, you know, that was the only thing you could use is AT&T. And now they broke up Ma Bell. And now it seems like they gave it away to individual companies. And the level of service that I'm getting, number one, is not as good as it used to be. And number two, um, the prices are going up and you get stuck in like, for example, with Cox, I have to bundle. If I don't bundle, then everything in the individual aspect of it goes crazy, goes through the roof as far as pricing goes. And, and, it, and it's, it's unique to that because I'm here in Thailand right now and my cell service for unlimited calling and unlimited data is $6 a month. I, I don't know what you guys are paying in the United States. I know that I know that 
mobile phone to have it be able to use here in Thailand is $120 a month compared to $6 here in Thailand. What about you guys? What do you, I, I mean, am I, am I just blowing smoke in the wind or is you guys agree with me about it? Yeah, Bruce. Um, I have an iPhone 14. My wife has an iPhone 14. She has also um, a, uh, another, uh, uh, not an Apple, but it's a, a, you know, one of the other ones. <laughs> and my daughter's still on our plan and it's basically unlimited everything. And I can tether my desktop or my laptop off of it. And it's 196 a month. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's crazy. You know, what is it like up in Seattle, Kurt? Uh, I got you speechless. I can't believe you're speechless. His mouth was moving, but there nothing was coming out. <laughs> there you go. And he's and he calls himself an audio engineer. Unbelievable. Yeah, I'm. I don't I haven't looked at it lately, but it's probably around two hundred bucks a month or something. You know. Is that not crazy, Sam? Now, you, are you Sam? Are you in Arizona? No, oh, good... I am uh, in uh, Albuquerque. Oh, and, Albuquerque! Uh, You're in New Mexico. Yeah. And we use a Cox affiliate, which is called X Infinity, and it's. 160 bucks a month for sure for yeah. internet and tv so maybe i'm moving to uh to your part of the world great absolutely excellent where's there's, david there's plenty of room i have a house for sale by the way okay uh, <laughs> no your house is in las vegas yes oh you're moving yeah. down here to thailand yeah oh, well come on down is what they used to say well on eastern airlines Wayne, what's it like? What's the what's the cell service and the phone service like in Australia? Well, my package, which is my computer, which is unlimited download, and my mobile phone and a landline, works out to 130 a month in Australian dollars. Yeah, yeah. so that would be quite a bit dearer in in your dollars. Yeah. The, um, oh. Yeah. So it's like, it's crazy. I mean, here it's like unbelievable. As a matter of fact, in the place that I'm renting, the internet, the high speed internet is free. Uh, you know, it's the, the, I don't know what they pay for it, but it's, it's less than 30 bucks a month for sure. When I was renting another place, it was something like $15 a month for unlimited high speed internet, which is, and you know, I was talking to somebody who's using Starlink. Have you guys familiar with Starlink? Elon Musk's yeah. Starlink? Yes. And 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 basically they're saying that that's a, a brilliant service. It works all over any, everywhere in the, it, the whole United States is blanketed with it. It's in 30 countries, but that's really super expensive as well. But that's using satellite technology. So you could be anywhere, anywhere, uh, anywhere at all and still have uh, uh, Internet access. But. Hey, I got a tip for you guys. I'm going to give you a tip. Uh, I was listening to something on uh, Tech Talk, and it's called QI5. That's Q, the letter Q, I, F as in Frank, I as in Irene, dot org. And what it does is, is you put in your, you put in the name of your, your, your Wi-Fi service in your house. So like if you, like if your router is called, uh, XYZ router, and then you put the password in, into this thing, and then it prints a QR code. So if someone comes to your house, you print this out, you put it on your refrigerator, and then they just come in and they scan it or you, they scan it and they're able to log right into your Wi-Fi. Uh, it's without without them having to go through the trouble of going through Wi-Fi. I think it's pretty cool. I thought I, I threw that in the chat. That takes all the fun out of trying to remember your password, though. Yeah. So, yeah, passwords, you know, uh, I don't know about you, but I, I'll, I'll give you a trick for for passwords. Um, everyone, everyone in, in this group seems to be a little bit older. So they remember when you were growing up, you had a landline phone that had a phone number, you know, uh, for example, uh, and where I used to live, it would be granite one, blah, 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 blah. And if you use that, or you use your old cell phone number as your password for your Wi-Fi, uh, you will, it'll be easy for you to remember. And, uh, so there you go. That's a, that's a tip and nobody will be able to figure it out unless they really knew you from years and years and years ago, which oh, probably unless they watch this show. 
Yeah, now they watch the show. Damn, but they'd have to look up where you lived and they'd have to, you know, they have to find an old yellow pages and uh, and find it. So um, anyway, basically, Those that's the end of pretty that story. They will. <laughs> well, so Jan, just, Jan, how's your yeah. gas bill and your electric bill there? Because we're about to, both myself and a friend of mine and my wife just got this, you know, my gas bill runs about 65 bucks a month on a level plate pay plan. And it's just like, I just got a bill for like 300. <laughs> and so did yeah, my David wife was and so did a friend that. of mine. David was telling me that they had huge increase in utilities. In oh Los my Angeles. God, it went. Yeah. Yeah. Many hundreds of percent in one month, all of a sudden. Yeah. So if you have any money to spare, buy utility bonds uh, because uh, they're not going anywhere. They're just going up, up and up in value. But no, here here they just raised it one bot a month uh, per per unit. So mm, for this house, running the air conditioner basically all of the time because it's about 90 degrees most of the time here. Oh, you're talking uh, electric, though. You're electric. Yeah. Yeah, electric. There is no gas. Uh, the gas here. Nobody uses gas. They all use propane. Everybody here uses propane. There's no gas lines to the houses. So your st your stove and your oven and stuff are propane. Yeah, everything's propane. propane. Everything everywhere. Uh, I don't believe they have. I don't believe they have natural gas running anywhere. I, I don't think I've even seen. You know, the propane tanks is a big business here. Very very big business, and even some of the trucks run on propane. As a, as a matter of fact here. Um, but the reality is, is that electric is pretty, it's so, everything here is reasonably priced because I'm using US dollars. You know, I guess if I wasn't using US, US dollars, the electric bill here, when you're running the air conditioner full time is about 3000 baht a month, which is uh, basically uh, 60 bucks you know, US, something like that, 60 to 90 bucks US. So. Anyway, speaking of money, and uh, I'm sorry, Mike Brown is in the room, boy, about Avatar. Avatar just crossed the $2 billion mark. I mean, is that, you know, we were talking about before the before we went online, $2 billion. I mean, that's, that is the GDP of most countries, you know? And there's going to be more Avatars coming out. Plus, not to mention, that's just, that is just what they made from the movie. Could you imagine what they're making from marketing? I guess you can. It's mind-blowing. Eh? Okay, well, you know. By the way, you guys all do look very, very good. I have to say you look great. But for those people listening on the podcast, they can't hear you. And they can't tell how good looking you are. But let me tell you, if you're, if you're listening to this and you're not watching the video, you don't know what you're missing, how handsome these people are. And Tina, I have to tell you, you know, I don't want to go down that road. But man, you don't know what you're missing out there. I'll tell you that right now. Okay. Speaking of movies, did you hear about oh, Movie oh, Passes yeah. Back? Yes, yes. Didn't they sell out or something? I don't know, but we'll throw a link in the chat for you guys so if you could uh, if you could bypass the line and get in there if they if it's available. Uh, so um, but basically for 10 bucks a month in most markets, you could see between uh, three and 30 movies, depending on or actually basically you could see a minimum of three movies. But if you pay a little bit more, you could see more movies. Uh, so that's basically it's a different plan. But it's pretty cool. But I think that as I was talking with David, and by the way, David can't be here today because he's attending a funeral. And so I'm sorry about that. And uh, may, he, may, may the person who is being buried rest in peace, whatever it is. Um, so anyway, yeah. Um, but I was talking to David about that. And it seems like all of the movie theaters have some sort of plan right now. Yeah. So my wife and I are on the Regal plan. It's twenty three dollars a month each. We get unlimited movies. We go to three or four a week right now until I get busy again. And then uh, fifteen percent off of uh, any of the concessions, and you build points. You know, and you can buy gift cards cheaper and use them yourself. I mean, it's 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 amazing. <laughs> it's actually pretty cheap. So we have stubs here in Arizona. We we did it. We started it. The last year of uh, COVID, and I think we passed the, we we made use of it in the first two months for the whole year. It was amazing because it was a it was a one year plan for one hundred and ninety five dollars the first year, and now it's twenty three a month. But it's still a pretty good deal because movies in LA are seventeen dollars each, 
I mean, if you if you if you go with your wife to a movie and you have some popcorn, I mean, you're going to blow a hundred dollars. <laughs> if you you know grab a burger and popcorn and a soda for two and two tickets, and you're out, you know, eighty dollars. It's ridiculous. So twenty three is pretty good. Well, here's another reason to move to Thailand. The, I, I saw Avatar. It cost me eighty eight baht. Eighty eight baht is less than three dollars. Um, you know, wow. so between Bo and I and popcorn, it cost us somewhere in the neighborhood of about six dollars. But was it in English? Yes, it was in English with subtitle with, with Thai subtitles. Oh wow! <laughs> wow. Yeah, it is. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of reasons to live here if you're an American, for sure. Uh, not to mention the, how great the food is. But I'm not on the Thai. I'm not on the Thai cultural board here. You know, bring Americans. As a matter of fact, there's too many people here already now that COVID is over. So it's getting crazy. But uh, speaking of too many people, Dave Matthews Band is going out on the road. And he's, they're releasing their 10th studio album called Walk Around the Moon, in case you're not a Dave a Matthews fan. But he's, you know, they're a huge band and they're going out. Super Bowl is coming. Uh, Super Bowl LV 1 2. What is that? What in is Arizona. that? 75. What, how many years? What, what Super Bowl is this? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure about my Roman, my Roman numeral uh, reading these days. Would you Everybody's say what's looking it up on their phones. Yeah, what year? What 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 game is this? Is this uh, the seventy second or the fifty third or the sixty second? What is it? Or the eyes on the left of the Fif V or the fifty seven? Yeah, fifty seven. That's right. Fifty L is fifty. V is five. There you go. Fifty seven. This is the fifty seventh February twelfth. You guys and and Rihanna is going to do the halftime show. And uh, they're going to have a pregame show uh, with Cheryl Lee Ralph, Chris Stapleton, and Babyface. So that is kind of interesting for you guys, uh, I'm sure. Now, have they decided what teams are going to be in the Super Bowl yet? No. We have that. those two games are this weekend. And what are the games, Tina? Uh, San Francisco is playing Philadelphia. And... Um, Cincinnati is playing the Bills. So I take oh. it your teams are out, Tina. Is that it? Your teams are out. Cincinnati is playing uh, not the Bills. The Bills are out. Oh, oh yeah, they played last weekend. Cincinnati is playing. Um, um, gosh, what's the other team? Well, I know it. I know it. I know it's not the team Tom Brady paid for. You know, it's, uh, you know. Kansas City. Kansas City. Kansas City. Yeah, yeah, they are That's playing true. Kansas City. Well, Kansas City, here they come. That's it. I had, I had to yeah, throw it. But in. the quarterback is hurt. Mahomes he has a high sprain ankle. Yeah, that is true. So we'll see how that goes. That guy is that guy is an amazing player. He looks, you know, he doesn't really to me when I watch him on 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 TV. He doesn't look like the consummate quarterback. But man, that guy is such a good quarterback. Do you really? guys realize that the quarterback for San Francisco was the last pick in the NFL draft? They call him Mr. Irrelevant. Yes. And all he's done is win the last five games yes. when uh, their yes. regular quarterback went down with an injury. Well, I think they yes. should get rid of him then. That's it. Mr. Rel get rid. No. Mr. So he's winning the games, eh? Yeah. Mr. Irrelevant has became Mr. Irrelevant. <laughs> now, I, Tina, I know you're a big Oakland fan, you know, what? Oh, I'm sorry, Las Vegas fan. Uh, but uh, don't you follow San Francisco, too? I do not. I, I mean, I only follow it because half my family are 49ers fans. So, yes, I'm forced to, to watch them. Yes. There you have it. There you have yes. it. Yes, I am. So I've watched Purdy um, win every single game since he's been in. Last, last week, he was pretty... Um, he showed how much, how much um, experience he didn't have, but hopefully this this week he'll come back and um, and fix all all his uh what, what was going on for him last last week. Yeah. Well, it's not a one man show. No matter how it is, you know, it's not a one man show. You need you know you need the full team. It's a team sport. There's a t yeah. you know football, especially of 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 sports that are available. I think football really is a team sport. Whereas sometimes it is a baseball, team sport, but he's the quarterback, so if he's messing up, you can tell. Yep, that's right. Yeah, but well, Philadelphia, speaking they they put on a clinic. That game was so 
it was so good. I didn't even expect Philadelphia to come out and play like that. Well, the good part about it, YouTube TV, you can watch the game if you missed it because they, they have them. Uh, YouTube TV is amazing. Um, I don't get any money for that. Oh, yeah, maybe I will. If I put a link in my my link, uh, you know, if, you, if you're not using it, I think I get, uh, I think I get a, a, some sort of discount. I'll have to look for my link. I'll send it to you individually. That's it. Uh, but uh, speaking of amazing, uh, Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson just announced two birthday shows. He must think he's like George Burns because he's turning 90 and he's going to be playing the Hollywood Bowl at 90. Willie Nelson, unbelievable, unbelievable. 90 years old. And guess what? The world's oldest person, a French nun, died at 118 years old. And her name was Sister Andre. And she was known as the world's oldest person. But the record for the person who lived the longest was also uh, from France. And her name was Jean Louise Clement. And she lived to 122 years. Um, so that's pretty amazing that people were able to live that long before modern medicine science. And then you got a guy like David Crosby who just passed away. And it's a shame that he, you know, he passed away, man. He, his voice was pretty amazing when blended in with, uh, you know, Crosby, Stills and Nash or the birds, you know, so, um, you know, RIP, David Crosby. Anybody big fans of uh, Crosby, Stills and Nash? Of course. Or the birds? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, Jan, if, you, if, if you're talking about those people over 100, if you were, um, no one will ever like in that in these uh, from in this generation that got to a hundred is going to experience so much change in technology. I don't feel ever again or before. I mean, if you go if you were a hundred and ten, cars were just being started. You know, like I mean, they were around, but the um, and then computers didn't the the technology change even even in in um, people that are. In their sixties and seventies, the gen the the amount of technology change from even when I was a kid and the way things have changed. So someone that's a hundred, like my dad was ninety seven. I just how do you like if you, if you were born in the nineteen hundreds or nineteen ten, uh, that you know, a lot of people in Australia didn't even have a fridge. <laughs> I don't know how that whether that was happening in a in a in America or not, but. Uh, uh, you know, and then lawnmowers were pushing ones for a long time. They did have, I think, in the all that sort of. So the technology change. So those people have experienced something that no other. I don't think generations are going to experience today. It's, it's not going to change that much again, is it? Do you think? Well, I think it will, but I'm I'm curious to know what Sam thinks. And I guess I'll stay curious on what Sam thinks. <laughs> so that Jim, age, you're probably some one of the one of the two or three people who've actually paid off their mortgage. <laughs> yeah. If you have it refinanced five times. Right. <clears throat> so my wife well, is my wife is 57 and she she was born in southern South Korea and lived on a great big rice farm. And up until she was 10, they did not have running water in the house electricity or uh bathrooms in the house you know they had an outhouse and they had to go outside to get their water and they didn't have electricity so you know <laughs> she's you know when i think you know i grew up with with a black and white tv you know and i had a car you know when i turned 16 and you know cars were always in my life ever since i could remember and you know it's amazing to think you know she when she tells me stories of how you know she's the youngest of seven you know, they grew up with without anything that we think of today, and they weren't even technically poor, you know, so it just really blows my mind, you know. Oh, I see it here in Thailand. And when I go into the rural communities, they, they, they don't have tractors. They're using they're using buffalo. They're Still, using yeah, you know, to, 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 to plow the fields. But I have to tell you, Andy Griffith, you remember that show, Andy Griffith? There was a comedian on him. I forgot. I forgot the guy's name, uh, but he was the cousin. He was like Goober's cousin. And I he I, I saw his act and he had this joke in it. He says that when he grew up, he was so poor 
that he remembers that on his 10th birthday, his father gave him a baseball cap so he could look at the window. You know, he didn't have any clothes. It wasn't, it wasn't until he was 10 years old that he got a baseball cap so that he could look out the window. I thought that joke was hilarious. But that brings us up to what we were talking about, and that is epigenics. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but this is a major breakthrough in our lifetime. Ponce de Leon would be shitting in his pants right now if he knew that this existed, because basically Harvard scientists now have reached a key milestone in learning how to reverse aging, and it's called epigenics. It's similar. Okay, so I'll explain it to you. So basically what they figured out is like you have a piece of cloth, right? You have a piece of cloth and you could make you, you can make shirts from it, or you can make pants from it, you can make a coat from it, but basically it's a pattern. Whatever pattern you use, you're gonna use to make with that with this piece of, piece of cloth, you can make various different items with this cloth. And that's what epigenics does with your cells. They have now been able to figure out not only how to reverse the aging process, but to enhance the aging process. So they've been able to take these laboratory mice, make them really old, and then revert them back to really young. And now, according to the article in Time Magazine, and we'll throw this into the chat, basically what they're able to do now is control the aging process. And in you reading the article, what they're going to be doing with this is not only are they have the ability to make us young again, and for example, let's just say I wanted to have my hair grow out again. They can do this for me. They could just say, all right, you want your hair? We know how to, we know how to manipulate your DNA with epigenics and we can give you, we can give you your hair. But if you have cancer, they could also reverse the cancer aging process or prostate or, or Alzheimer's or whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is. And the beautiful thing is, is that if it does work, then disease could be a thing of the past. Now, it's 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 an unusual thing to think about that we're playing with human human lifespans. But the reality is, I think to, I think that the worst part about growing old, at least in my experience, is not only does your body change, so you can't do the things that you did as you were young, but what's worse than even that is that you lose the people that are near and dear to you, the people that mean the most to you, that have mentored you, or that you've been good friends with. I, I, I'm unfortunately, I have lost too many people in my life already. Um, and it's, it's, that's to me is the worst part about growing old. And I remember listening to some like that, that nun, um, people in that age group, and they all say the same thing. The worst part about growing old is losing the people that are near and dear to you. But if everybody can have this now, you wouldn't be losing the people that near and dear with you. So let me ask you and open it up to the room. If you had the ability to have you and your friends live forever, would you take that up? Would you do that? Well, I want to oh. see what Keith Richards is going to do in the next 20, 30 years. So, yeah, I'm all over it. <clears throat> no, I wouldn't want to. I now, just remember, it. Bruce, you can, if they did the epigenics on you, they can, I mean, you know, and I'm not being facetious, but they could bring you back to when you were 18 years old. They could bring your body back to when you're 18. So now you're 90 years old, but now you could run a marathon, uh, taking for granted that when you were 18, you were running marathons, you know? But, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, think about it. Let's just say for argument's sake that you wanted your hair to be dark again. You know, your hair could be dark again. If you, you know, let's say you're having problems with your eyesight, they can cure your eyesight. So, yeah, but you as, might aside, aside from all of that, do you really want to live in the world 100 or 200 years from now? I don't know that I want to. I ain't seeing anything good coming down the pike right now. So I'm not really sure. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I mean, it, there's there's a lot of things going on in the world that, you know, that are, you know, are really, really difficult. You know, I would think that, you know, like uh, just an example in the in the news, uh, Somalia or you, the Ukraine or or, um, or or the Serengeti, you know, these are all places where there where there are problems. But the re and of course, the challenge of of global warming, I mean, 
people deny global warming. I mean, they do, they do deny it and they think that man has nothing to do with it. But it's been proven now beyond the shadow of a doubt that the oil companies knew that global warming and that they were they were adding to it and they buried that information but now it's out and now it's out in the open and you'll see so uh, unfortunately you know the the way our society works in america is that everybody gets sued when they do something so now all these oil companies are going to be sued out of existence as well as you know because uh, you know they 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 buried this information that they knew that they were causing great harm into the world but the reality is is that you know I don't know. I don't know. I, I really don't know. If I had the opportunity to live forever, I don't know. But we could be, it's we could be that ruled, I think about. We could be ruled by China in the next hundred years. Hey, Bruce, that won't happen. Bruce, aren't what? the Vulcans supposed to show up soon and then everything gets better? Not with the Vulcans, I'm sure, but I don't know. I thought that was the whole timeline thing where they make contact and then they were realized that- On Star Trek? Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember, to be honest with you. <laughs> you got a spaceship behind you. I figured you'd be the one. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the thing is, Bruce, they came in and raced your memory for that. But don't worry. When they come back, they'll bring it back. <laughs> so are you are you saying that everybody would live long with us? Or would we, Would was it a personal question of how would I, would I like to live forever? And then all my friends and my family would be long gone. You know, I'm, no, that because that would what good would be living if you if, if everybody you everybody you loved was gone. No, well, that's what I mean. I'm not sure coming with you. Think, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, I I don't know. Think how hard it'd be to get parking spaces though, because if everybody does it and everybody lives forever, then where well, you are gonna go? if they're gonna make me drive an electric car, I definitely don't want to live forever. <laughs> <laughs> there you <laughs> Yeah, well, good. you know, the, the rumor is the rumor is one of the one of the side things that I've read is that the people who would first get involved in this would be guys like Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Warren, Warren, Warren Buffett. You know, the really mega wealthy people would all get would jump on this and then their wealth would just expand exponentially because they would be able to take what they've got now and build it and build it, and build it. And there would only be a handful of people then in control of, of the bulk of the money in the world. But but then again, you know, how much money do you need if you're going to live forever? You know, the question is, is then, you know, is it, is it going to be a Bacchanal? Whereas, you know, like, uh, like, for example, strangers in a strange land where you come in and you, you know, you got, you grok everything. And, you know, who knows? I mean, that's something that, uh, that's, uh, you know, it's something to think about. Fred, what about you? What do you think? I don't know. I'm just... If you get you get to keep your knowledge. Yeah, you get to keep everything. Matter of fact, your mind gets sharper because that's, you know, you want your mind sharper. You know, that's you just say, hey, I need my I, I need you to work with my epigenics here and uh, I need to uh, have my mind sharper. I mean, it's a cure for Alzheimer's. I mean, that's it's a cure for everything. Yeah, I, I don't know. I might, you know I what might, I might think uh, about? Sorry. <laughs> finish no, I, I, I was just saying I, I, would, I would possibly think about it i mean obviously you can't bring people back that are already gone but you know as long as as long as everybody wanted to jump on the bandwagon why not well don't tend don't tell stan mutual that because basically you know he has you know he, he's cryovac himself there and so there are some people that have cryovac themselves uh you know into 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 that so they, you know so you know one hey. of the, one of the things that amazes me is we've come so far in technology, even in our little world of of speakers and amplifiers, but we're still speakers. Speakers are still boxes with vibrating paper. When are we gonna When are we gonna get past that? You know, we got. Well, we have somebody in the room that can answer that. We have Colin in the room right now, and Colin probably has an answer for that. But there's got to be a better way to do this. So, so for the last forty years, we've had piezo electric speakers, which are pieces of aluminum vibrating in a in a container. Well, now J JBL's got the plastic diaphragms now, which are right. amazing. Well, what's really cool, though, uh, that I just saw recently was there was a company that there was had a booth at CES that had a a CPU cooler that operated on the same basis. So it was a, a MEMS type wow. chip that that produced, I can't remember how many PSI of pressure to uh, basically, it apparently this thing was so, uh, such, such high, operated at such high pressure that you could, uh, 
could uh, uh, water seal your your device and it would still push air through whatever diaphragms you had on the outside to water seal the thing. Um, I can't remember the name of them now. I'm sure it'll come, I'm sure it'll come to me. But you know, it, it, I grant you, it's basically the same technology. But you know, you got to go with what works. <laughs> Isn't there? Yeah, I just I just find that interesting. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Out there now that that you it runs on like hundred thousand volts or something. It basically just excites the air. If there's there is no transducer. One of the manufacturers had a flat. I saw this yeah. at one of the sound companies. It was it looked like a painting on the wall. That's what I'm and, talking about. Yeah. Except there was no painting. It was just sort of a tan color, and 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 of course it vibrated, right? But the, the, technically, I mean, there was no real speaker in the room, and right. this thing yeah. just emanated sound in the in the whole boardroom. And I was like, "Where's that coming from?" It was the weirdest thing. Yeah, that, that, I think that, that's what I'm talking about. Is there? I thought that there was a technology out there that it runs on some ridiculous voltage. It there was a thing called the ion cannon that they were playing around with in the 90s. I don't know. Was that a Carver it. thing? Because didn't he didn't Bob Carver do something with uh with with vibrating crystals or something? And the difference between the speed of the crystals was it the human hearing range or something? I thought he he had something to do with with some some vibrating crystal thing. I think he was trying, but it might have mm -hmm. blew up and blew up his garage or something. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, well, that was what is it going to be next for speakers? They made the real big change. So we've changed the driver material 15 times and it's gotten really, really good. But it's still, I mean, they're, for the most part, it's a piece of paper wobbling back and forth inside a box. So what's coming next? I'm really curious. <laughs> well, I always thought that the next generation of professional professional equipment has to do with the wireless and it has to, and, and, and when I say wireless, I mean, it has to be do with wireless for, for both input signals as well as for power because you have to be able to the the, the biggest challenge is powering you got to get power and you got to be have the constant power for that that to work so once they can come up with a a concept where they can power the boxes then then there could be some major changes but until they figure out a way to um change the way we hear things which is a vibration which basically is frequency vibration right yeah. Well, it so the point raises into your ears and hope for the best. Well, what about artificial intelligence, Colin? Could they do something like in that respect? With, well, this with... is one of those things. Uh, people keep talking about, you know, AI systems taking over the world and using AI systems to design better s systems of other types. Uh, particularly interesting to me are the the AI systems where you're, you uh you, they, they have a, a, a physics model such that you can uh, deliver an instruction like design a better manufacturing procedure for thus and to end with thus and such a product and give them a CAD model of the product with its, you know, ro related physics model. Um, it's still theoretical, but I mean, it, it would be neat to see, right? Design me a better speaker with the objective of exciting the air in a particular way to you render these particular tones. Um, it's possible. It hasn't happened yet, but yeah, it's, these things are all, all down the pike. It's going to be, you know, one step removed from the holodeck, right? Computer design me a chair. Okay. Does it, does it put a console in front of it, connect it to my brain? You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all pie in the sky stuff now, but it'll it'll come eventually. Just there was an article on I was seeing there talking about the uh, uh, the singularity. Uh, most most recent prediction is the singularity will occur in, in less than seven years. I don't buy that. I give it at least fifty, but we'll see. Oh, so I found I found the uh, video for that that MEMS transducer. Uh, I'll I'll post it in chat. Good, good. Hey, listen, you, I, I don't know if you were here where you, you got in just as we started talking about epigenics. Are you familiar with that, with the Harvard, what they've done with the re reverse aging pa patents uh, at Harvard? I, I'm not particular with that particular research. I know the concept and theory. I mean, it's all about uh, reducing the, the dimin diminution of telomeres, right? 
Well, basically, Harvard scientists have reached a keystone and basically in reversing aging. They're calling it epigenics. And so basically, the whole idea is they could redesign your cells, just like a, if you if I was a tailor, I had a piece of cloth, I could make a pants, I could make a jacket, I could make a coat. But that's what they could do with, with epigenics. And they could reverse the aging process. And they've been doing it now with, with laboratory mice. They're now experimenting with primate and with human tissue. So... Um, Basically, you could live forever, and the people around you could live forever. Uh, are you familiar with that at all? I, I hadn't seen that particular research. I mean, people have been trying to do that for years. But well, they've done it. Harvard, Harvard has done it. Harvard has done it. And so what we were asking everybody in the room, if you could live forever and keep the people around you that you love, would you do it? My problem with people living forever is the economic problem created. That is, you have a population, an increasing population, and no no corresponding decrease in population. So you would have to hold, come up with a whole different economic system to support these infinitely increasing number of personages. Um, so <laughs> personages, that's great. Exactly, well, I mean, it would be the it would be the stranger in the strange after, land concept after, of after, life. After a certain point, you know how how much are they going to be able to repair your brain? You might be a vegetable, but walking around still because your muscles still work because they replaced them six months ago. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it's it's. I, I think the economic problem is much more interesting than the than the. Uh, the neurological or, or, or medical problem associated with that. Uh, it was, I mean, and of course there have been great science fiction books and uh, movies and series produced around this. Uh, one of the ones that I enjoyed recently was, uh, 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 what the hell was it called? Altered Carbon. So the premise here is a mechanism was developed by which you could uh, separate one's consciousness from one's physical body and replace place that consciousness in any other physical body. So you had a caste system where the lower castes would rent out their bodies and be put in cold storage and make a bunch enough money to then live their life to some degree, where you had the upper classes who just kept uh, buying new bodies and, and living forever. So... Yeah. There's also another book called Upgrade by Blake Crouch also delves into that as well. But I think it's a fascinating subject, you know, and that's why I brought it up. And I'm going to be looking into it. And uh, as you see me getting younger and younger, eat your heart out. That's all I can say. Eat your heart. You know, anyway, uh, also speaking of getting younger and younger and eating your heart out, I want I, I want to do a public service announcement. And that is the new 988 phone number. You guys are aware of 988. It's like the 411 for mental crisis or 911 of mental crisis. So uh, it's the mental crisis hotline. And uh, by the way, they have seen an, an amazing significant rise in volume of calls since uh, it started six months ago. But if you're not familiar with it, and you need some mental, you know, you're not feeling, you know, you're not feeling like uh, you could go on. Uh, 988 is the number to dial on any phone. Again, that's 988. Uh, and so, you know, use it, use it wisely. That's all I could say. I trust anyway. that's within the States. Are you back in the States now? No, but I still have access to 988, you know, really? although I, I although well, I, I mean, really okay, feel like a IP phone systems, but it is a US based system, right? Yeah, I believe it is. Yeah, I believe it is. I, I don't I don't think they're going to be able to send an ambulance to me, but I don't think that's the idea. It's the, the idea of this, this. This line is to talk you off the cliff. Or talk you off the ledge, if, if you per call se. A mental help mental health helpline aren't you halfway off the cliff already well if you're i guess if you could figure out how to dial it when you when you're up on that ledge you're not really ready to jump off the ledge you know well no what you what you need is you need you need your your you know your eye watch to dial it for you yeah there you go you feel uh, you know, like that's you're about much. to jump off this cliff we've done some gps analysis and we see you're too close to the edge of this cliff we're going to call a mental health <laughs> So your eye watch, your eye watch should sense the fact that you're not all there. Well, 
more I mean they can easily sense the fact that you're falling but then it's kind of too late so you got to admit you got to do some GPS analysis <laughs> and if you get more than a, less than a foot from a cliff uh, of more than you know two stories high or something it <laughs> have it call some for some intervention yeah Yep, 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 100% correct. Look, the Ultra Watch basically is using uh, a GPS satellite signal right now to tell where you are. So if you if you're if you if you fall off a cliff, like you're mountain climbing, uh, it, it will it will automatically notify that that you're in that you're in danger and pinpoint where your location. Well, it, it struck me as interesting that Google was the first to do this, right? Uh, they didn't. They didn't advertise it as a product feature, but then you saw these commercials later on, uh, where they're talking about, you know, I I got into this car accident and my and my Pixel phone called the police because I came to a sudden stop at, at unreasonable, you know, incre- decreasing velocity at an unreasonable rate and so on. Uh, they they had ads about this, and then only six or eight months later, did Apple introduce this as a definitive feature within their phones and still Google hasn't done that. I mean, to me, it, it's a huge liability issue to say that our phone will save you from a car accident as opposed to saying, well, we have this hidden feature where our phone might save you from a car accident, but we, we don't, we don't have an opinion on it one way or the other. Yeah. I had to shut off on my iPhone. You know, the, the, the they have this thing, if you fall down, and I had to shut that off because if I was playing sports, it would going it was going off all the time. And you know, I, hey, look, I haven't fallen down. I, I'm I'm playing sports, you know. So I had to shut that off, you know. But Garmin has had it. Garmin has had that feature in their watches forever. You know, the Apple is just you know, it's one one more thing that Apple is doing. You know, is like they're introducing something that's not new, but they're taking an old concept and making it and, and revolutionizing it somehow. Well, that's what Apple does. They, they don't innovate anything. They just package things nicely. Yeah. But, yep. That's right. But uh, anyway, go ahead. Actually, I got to go let my dog in. He's yelling at me. One second. Well, very good. Well, it's good to see you. Um, but come down. We're not leaving yet. We I'll, got I'll a few more back. stories. I'll be back. Just we got a few more stories. One of the things I'll wait for you to come back. I'll talk about the, uh, the crypto queen and, um, uh, but I will talk about one more thing, and that is Mark Cuban. You guys know who Mark Cuban is, right? If you yes. don't, you've been living in a cave uh, for a long time. But Mark Cuban is just made a decision to go into the. It, it, now listen to this. You won't believe this, but the but the in the United States, pharmaceuticals is a three hundred and sixty five billion dollar a year industry pharmaceuticals. And Mark Cuban, this is going to be the first time of all the projects that he's had that he's going to put his name into. And it's going to be, it's basically going to be called uh, the Mark Cuban um, discount pharmacy or something like that. And basically what he's going to do right now is he's going to buy Tons of medicines, tons of medicines, like 46 of the most popular, most in demand, expensive medicines. And instead of charging like an an unrageous amount of money, he's going to charge only 15 percent above his cost and pass the savings on to everybody. And this is something that he's rolling out right now. And it's going to be accepted by Medicare and Medicaid and all insurances. So Mark Cuban is about to disrupt the pharmaceutical industry, whereas Congress in the United States couldn't negotiate uh, Medicare to negotiate medicine prices, Mark Cuban has decided to step in the middle now and do it. And that is pretty cool. What do you guys think about that? Well, well I'll throw the link in the chat. I'm sorry? Uh, he already has. He, he was advertising it all last year. And um, he already has the store up and everything. Cost yeah, plus of course, Amazon has their their yeah. entry into pharmaceuticals. They're doing unlimited pharmaceutical delivery for five bucks a month. Um, uh, the uh, Bill and Linda Gates Foundation tried to do this at one point and failed. I mean, it, it's a huge opportunity if you can get it right, but you have to spend big big bucks to actually get it right. And there are not many people who can uh, who can finance the the front end, the upfront cost to set something like that up properly. Yeah. Well, he's got the money. It seems like he's got the money to do it. 
put a link to his website. Yeah, but put a link. I, I put a link up there about if you guys want to get involved in that. That's cool. I think it would be a great thing. Anyway, the last story that I'm going to bring up is the crypto queen scammed investors out of four billion dollars. The FBI said she and she boarded a plane in, and disappeared. Her name is Ruga. Ignatova, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And now she's one of the FBI's top most wanted fugitives alongside accused gang leaders and murderers. And she is the only woman currently in the top 10 list of most wanted fugitives of all of the 500 fugitives on the history of the FBI's list since it launched. She is just one of 11 women. And so we'll throw that link into the chat as well. Um, who here in the room is on cryptocurrency? Anybody doing it? I, I've managed to avoid it since uh, since Bitcoin hit uh, ten thousand. I I got out at that point uh, just because uh, I, I guess I could have waited until eighteen thousand, which was really my I, I meant to do that because that was the point at which uh, you had uh, uh, legitimate exchanges entering into it, and you could actually short short Bitcoin until you could short it. It was obviously an uptrending. <laughs> uh investment but as soon as people could short it, it it became not worthwhile the um uh the woman you mentioned uh was uh the primary operator behind one coin and uh jen i know uh a mutual friend of ours who i think will remain nameless for the moment uh was a huge promoter of one coin mm. uh, <laughs> JP, JP Morgan, I think is. <laughs> yeah, all right. Anyway, um, the uh, it, it was an interesting system, right? And, and it was really low tech. I don't know if any of you, I, I don't know how much detail you want on this stuff. The, uh, the system was incredibly low tech. It was a, a MySQL database. There was no blockchain behind it. it wow, was, it was how was that possible? It was essentially just a pyramid scheme. It was... We oh, are that's going why. To build, we are going to build this coin up, and then we're going to, when we get enough money, then we're going to deploy a blockchain behind it and allow it to be traded and so on. So it was, it was, you know, they they, they even used the terms of all of these uh, 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 pyramid schemes, these Ponzi schemes. It was, you know, buy a package of coins and and you know a, a unit of this and and. Uh, and an advertising component of that so that you could, you know, uh, promote this. And of course you get a commission if you sell, you know, a set of coins, a, a unit, a, a package of coins to other people and so on. And there were different packages. And so it was, it was, you know, I, I talked to our mutual friend for five minutes about this. And I, and so he said, well, I got to get on this conference call about this. I said, well, first tell me about this. He tells me about it for five minutes. I said, dude, this is a Ponzi scheme. You, you don't want to be <laughs> and, well, yeah, and he yeah, said, well, yeah. if you think that, then go, go, go into the other room while I have this conference call. Yeah, it's funny that you should mention it because Warren Buffett and, and Charlie Munger, they are so anti cryptocurrency because there's nothing involved in it. They, you know, you're buying something that you're hoping somebody else will find value in it to buy it from you. Whereas where they want to buy things that they believe in, such as farmland and, and Apple and railroads and things that actually create create revenue rather than something that's just a nebulous thing like a Bitcoin. Well, digital and, currency has some legitimacy as a fundamental concept concept, right? Uh, if you can uh, maintain scarcity, that is, you can't just infinitely duplicate the coin, then then you can manage a cryptocurrency. But how is that any better than any of the existing digital banking systems out there? Well, it isn't. Um, the, uh, the, the reason you don't see it adopted, of course, and this is why I got out when I did, is because I don't see it being adopted by any governments. Once I see a couple of governments adopting a, a cryptocurrency, and I did look at Venezuela, and that was interesting to me up until it wasn't. Um, until you see a government backing a cryptocurrency, it's not worth investing in as far as I'm concerned. I mean, they will exist. <laughs> or they are a unit of, of transaction to the extent that people will are willing to transact in it, but why would you obfuscate your transactions that way unless you're looking to obfuscate your transactions for some reason? Exactly. Uh, the uh, uh, but Venezuela, of course, uh, launched a cryptocurrency 
uh, pegged to uh, un, uh, undrilled barrels of oil, unmined barrels of oil or un, undrilled wells. Uh, the, the presumed amount of oil that, that was in their reserves. And so it was actually pegged to something. It still didn't work. It still didn't work. So, um, you know, it's it's a short term investment for people who want to gamble, but it's not a viable one. I mean, it's not a something to to peg your retirement on. That's for damn sure. Yeah, I would agree with you completely. Well, listen, guys, we're at the point we've been we've been online for about an hour now. And so I even though I have so many other stories that I want to cover, like the Alex Baldwin story and the U.S. debt and uh, um, oh, I don't know, and all the spam and scamming that's going on, T-Mobile getting hacked again, 37. But we'll have to cover that next week. But before we go, as I always do, I want to open the room up to anybody who has anything that they want to say right now that haven't they haven't they haven't gotten out of their chest right now for social media so is there anything anybody wants to say now's the time thank you for letting me join well uh, i love your video sam uh it's amazing you know the color is crisp camera's amazing uh, i gotta tell you and you look you look you look marvelous darling to it's about that. five years <laughs> old <laughs> yeah you look marvelous i tell you david david popped in the room for a minute but he's gone now so anybody anybody else have anything they want to say have a great Australia Day in Australia. Yada, yada, yada. Yep. Bruce, anything more? I'm Kurt? good. Yeah, it's Fred? Great. I'm good. Those on the West Coast, be safe, man. With all the, I was just watching the news. There's like been like 40 killings or something, and it's we we're 25 days into the year. It's almost two hey, a day. I, I, Fred, you know, I, I want to ask you a question because last week you weren't here and I, there was a story in the news of this city um, right outside of Scottsdale that they shut their water off. What's the inner scoop on that? I don't know what the inner scoop is. I saw it uh, about, th about a month ago. The city of Scottsdale, I guess it's like a little annex up in the mountains up in there. Um, some, they let some contractor come in that built a city that didn't have the 100-year water supply. Well, it's it's Cave Creek, and it's not it's within Scottsdale. Creek. Scottsdale was selling their water to the to that municipality, right. and with the short, they're running short on on water, so they decided to cut them off. That's basically the story. Yeah, that's basically basically it. Yeah, you know, because we're we're Lake Mead is going as you know, Lake Mead is like a mud puddle now. Um, and the West Coast is going to be starting to hurt for water here soon. Um, That's you know. a really weird way to run contracts. That no. You can just cut off a community. I mean, either you, you're contracted to deliver water to a community at a certain amount, you know, a certain amount for over a certain period, or you're not. The right. contract was over. Oh, they it had expired? expired? Oh, geez. <laughs> They okay, didn't I, do it. that is pretty fucked up. Okay, I didn't. I didn't know that it expired. I was under the impression that they they that they they needed six lots of development, and to uh, bypass the law, they only built five lots, and that was how Scottsdale uh, it, was able to cut them lots off. Lots of homes there, and they're million dollar homes, and they're way they're north of of the town of Scottsdale, basically. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's a scary thought. Just imagine, you know, and, and I was saying that, you know, in the story last week, it's their their water bill went from two hundred dollars a month to over a thousand dollars a month because now they have to truck the water in. And they're washing the dishes with rainwater. Yep. Well, hey, that's what they do it here. They do it. They do it here in the this rural areas. Is, this is the next thing they're going to come and bust them for, because I, I know in California, you can't trap rainwater. Yeah, they say that's not your water. It's government. Is that a water. thing, really? Oh, we're oh so fucked God. up here. We're oh, so yeah. messed California, up here. It's, not, it's definitely a thing. If you you put a barrel and catch the water coming off your roof, you can go to jail. You can go. You can't to jail. even do it here. Believe it or not, it's illegal to collect your own rainwater in Seattle. I'm so glad I didn't move out to Vegas when I was thinking about this. State, this state yeah. is I mean, that is crazy mess. that the government owns the rainwater. That's amazing. Who would have you, thought you, that? You apparently have air rights over your property, but you don't have 
rate. Wow. Okay. You don't you don't even have ground rights underneath your ground. I mean, right now, um, Paso Robles area, there's a there's a whole lake under under Paso Robles that uh, that they're trying the government's trying to get around all the rules to get the water out from under all of the farms that that pump water, you know, have pumps on their land to feed their crops and their animals and everything like that. And there's a huge lawsuit up there. A friend of mine's got a horse ranch up there and and they're having a terrible time fighting the government for their own water. <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is a totally messed up state, I'm telling you. They got their heads stuffed so far up their asses it's unbelievable. You should buy some waterfront well, property at that lake, Bruce. Yeah, I should. No, you just well, buy it's an underground water, lake. Buy some, waterfront, buy some, buy some beachfront property on on the uh, uh, at the end of, and the at the west edge of Nevada. That's the way to do it, and just wait. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well they're, they're saying the big floods are about to come. They're saying the big floods are going to wipe out Central Valley of California. They're saying did, that did that's going to be. Did you see imminent. the pictures? Did you see the pictures from a couple of weeks ago from the big rain? No, no. no. Oh my it? God! The ninety nine was underwater for like thirty miles. It was completely shut down. It was underwater. Yeah, it was crazy. Oh, the pictures were amazing. Yeah, they say, and that, and they're saying that that they're saying that that's nothing. It's going to be biblical proportions. Yeah. Biblical. You yeah, know? We were mentioning earlier the forty killing uh, mass killings that occurred this year in the last twenty five days. That's that's where almost, I started with this. That's what I said. Almost which is almost two a day. Yeah. But um, it, going back to water, we in in the southeast have uh, forty hurricanes that are uh, 40, 40 tornadoes. I'm sorry that have popped up in the last 36 hours. So oh, oh. I'll drink to that. Oh yeah. Lots of water. We get lots of water, more water than we want. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, as you can see out there in social media land, this is a lively bunch. We have a lot of, a lot of mind power. This is a great round table of, of, of masterminds and I'd love you to join us. So next week, if you want to come join us, just DM me on anywhere you're watching this and we'll send you a link to get into the room and you can add your voice to the conversation. Just remember everything you heard today here on our current event show is an opinion. So do your own research. And with that in mind, I'm going to say goodbye or friends don't say goodbye. I'll just say like, see you later. See you next week. And with that, just remember you make it happen. So make it happen and have a great and safe and healthy week stay away from any gunfire and hopefully you'll be back in the room next week with that in mind we're going to leave you and we're going to talk amongst ourselves about you all right anybody <laughs> bye and we'll talk to you guys soon and we are off the air and we are no longer recording